Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, I'd like to share a video with you that I think you would, um, you would, I think you, I would like to believe you would really like. <laughs> Today is Tuesday, September 29th, and it's 5.51 p.m. Okay, this is called, Who is the Holy Spirit? And then in parentheses, it's got, this is so powerful. All right, it was put up September 28, 2020 by the channel Angel Motivation. Now, I started to not watch it because of the channel name, but I promise you the video, this video, is all 100% right. I'm going to play a little bit of it. It's only 9.53, but just so you get an idea of what he's saying, it isn't um, like New Age, because that, that was just what kind of struck me. A lot of angel this, angel that is kind of New Age, if you really pay attention. But not all of it. Okay, so here I'm going to play about a minute and 20 seconds is all. The Holy Spirit is the third person in the Godhead. When Jesus was nearing the completion of his earthly ministry, he promised to send a comforter to his disciples and one who will make the work of the gospel seamless. He called him a teacher and the spirit of truth. However, it is sad these days to see believers erroneously refer to the Holy Spirit using the IT determinant. Whether this is conscious or an oversight, it is wrong. The Holy Spirit is a person and not an object as we do presume. When Jesus mentioned comforter, I am sure he didn't have an inanimate object in mind. The Trinity is God in three persons, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God himself, and not an it, but indeed a he. There are biblical verses and scriptural backings that proved a personhood of the Holy Spirit and put away the idea of him possibly being an impersonal object. The Holy Spirit possesses emotions. Ephesians 4 verse 30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, wherefore ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay, I'm going to just stop it there. That's one of the verses the uh, Once Saved, Always Saved uses. I'm just going to bring that up because it sounds like if you just take that part, sealed unto the day of redemption. Yes, you are unless you backslide and decide you want to get back into the world a little bit and then it causes you to get back into the world a little bit more and you love Jesus a little bit less or God really it's Father, Son and Holy Spirit as he said God is a three person in one God so if you say that you love God with all your heart mind soul and strength and you and you pray to father and you pray to son, jesus the son but you don't want any part of that holy spirit stuff because you're afraid of that you don't want to you don't want to speak in tongues or nothing weird well you got to get over that if any of you have that problem you have to get over that because that grieves the Holy Spirit it's not blasphemy of the Holy Spirit don't mix the two blasphemy is saying something the Holy Spirit did 
is of the devil. Like when Jesus healed somebody or cast a demon out, the scribes and Pharisees with their religious spirits would say, he did that by Beelzebub. Remember those scriptures? Okay, that's when Jesus would tell them about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. We would do something like that by the power of the Holy Spirit in us. Okay, to heal somebody or um, to cast a demon out of them. Okay, so I'm going to just stop it there and say I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over each and every one of us and our devices and our internet connections. God bless each and every single one of you. You all stay safe out there and remember, if you belong to God and you believe his word and you're reading Psalm 91, you should be reading it or, or maybe you have it memorized, go through it every night or most nights. There are, you know, now and then I am so wiped out. I just say the first parts. And then uh, no plague or pestilence will enter into my dwelling. Okay, and I thought that would cover the whole building, but it's evidently just for my apartment. Because we did have a few cases here. An employee was the first person in her family, someone in her family. And then we later on got a couple or three cases on the third floor. And we had a lady on the second floor. I didn't even know about it. Here she's been outside and everything. And I said, don't worry about it. She had to have tested negative two times in a row before they would have let her come home. So don't, you don't have to worry about being around her. Even though she goes outside and forgets her mask. You know, they don't come running out and saying, you know, so-and-so, you forgot your mask. Get back to your room and get it. They don't do that. But they should. I mean, that's their rule, you know. And But they told us in our meeting the other day we didn't have to wear a mask outside when we're on the patio. And we should practice social distancing, but they're not going to come out and police us. That we, we know what we're supposed to do. Well, that's good. I was glad to hear it. Because I thought they were going to get on to us for not all wearing masks and staying exactly six feet or more apart, you know? Anyway, I don't know how I got off on that. Oh, because they're saying the numbers are going back up already. And I know why they're saying because of kids going to school. And they're too close together, and now they're playing football. Just wait for the first football player to get it. I mean, he could get it from his uncle. You know what I'm saying? You just don't know. And they can't blame it on that. We have to stay healthy. And playing games outside in fresh air is good for us. It's good for those young people to keep their immune systems up. So, but, but what I, I was trying to get at is that as children of God, believers in Christ, and we believe the Word of God, you read Psalm 91, and there are others that talk about the Lord protecting us, keeping us covered under his wings and things like that, you will stay protected. He will protect you. I just, I just can't help but believe if someone did come down with COVID or they were told it was COVID, because it's so common. It is a common virus. They say causes the common cold. Why do they ask us at the door? You got any signs or symptoms of a cold? What? 
Are you kidding me? You know, I just said no, because, you know, allergies cause sniffling. I mean, a cold is really like a really runny nose, and your eyes are watery. It's worse. Well, allergies can do that too, though. And a lot of us know our bodies, and we know which one is which. A cold feels worse, I think. I've had other people say allergies make them feel horrible, but maybe so, you know? Anyway, I'm sorry I got off on all that, but I'm going to let you go now, and I will talk to you later. Oh, and my shirt, if you can't read it, says... It is not about religion. It's about relationship. It's kind of crooked for some reason. Maybe my legs are crooked. It's about relationship. Jesus doesn't want you to have a religion of Christianity. He wants you to have a relationship with him. Okay? Love him. Let him love you back. And just talk to him. You don't have to have memorized prayers. You don't have to take... Some people have these prayers printed out, typed out, whatever. They'll put them in comments. You'll see them under every video. And they're nice, but Jesus wants to hear your words from you okay sometimes those prayers are necessary for like deliverance uh get um a healing maybe um like praying psalm 91 that's a prayer when you say that every night you're praying those protections over you so i don't mean that he wants that too because it shows your faith that you believe those his word. But he wants to hear from you, like just your words. Like, I love you, Jesus. I can't wait to be with you. I can't wait to see you and hug you and kiss your wounds and kiss your forehead where the crown of thorns was. And just to bow at your feet, just to lay, lay prostrate in front of you and worship you. I just want that so much. And that's what he wants to hear. Okay? Alright. Now, I'm out.